last Sunday, the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, our gospel came from the Gospel of Matthew. On this, the second Sunday of Ordinary Time, we hear from the Gospel of John. Last week, Father Schuster reminded us that baptism wasn't necessary for Jesus as far as removing sin like it is for us. But it was used to announce the identity of Jesus. And of course, we are always announced and identified by name before we are baptized. Recall how after Jesus rose from the water of the, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down and remained upon him and the voice of God the Father was heard, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. In, Gospels, uh, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus goes at once out into the desert to fast and pray for 40 days. It is at the completion of Jesus' time in the desert that John the Evangelist takes up the story of Jesus in his gospel that we heard today. Jesus went to where John the Baptist was once more to listen to him and to be given the recognition that, as to who he was. The Jews and the scribes had been questioning John about, uh, about who he was. And John was telling them that there was one among them that they did not recognize who was really the long-awaited Holy One of God. When, saw, when, Jesus, when John saw Jesus, he called out, There he is, the one whom I've been telling you about the Lamb of God, and he pointed him out, showing them all who Jesus was, proclaiming a positive identification as the one whom the prophets of old foretold would be the sacrificial lamb to save the man, mankind from their sins and reopen the gates of heaven for all who believed in him. He would come meek as a lamb being carried to slaughter, who would proclaim the good news to the poor, who would heal the sick and the suffering, who would raise the dead to new life, who would make atonement for the sins of mankind by his passion, death, and resurrection, and reopen the gates of heaven. And we can add, he would feed us with his body and blood, food of eternal life. Truly, Jesus is called the Lamb of God, the offspring not of sheep, but of God, who at the command of God became man for the redemption of mankind. John's statement, I did not know him, seems a little strange since he and Jesus were relatives but when we remember that since John was a child, he lived in the desert apart from everyone, he would not have had any contact with Jesus, well then it makes sense. Therefore his testimony, there is the Lamb of God, was based on what happened as Jesus came up from the waters of baptism. The heavens were opened, the Holy Spirit descended upon him, and the voice was, from above was heard to proclaim, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That way no one could say that they knew each other and had made all this up beforehand because of kinship, friendship, or some favor. And John continues, the one who sent me to baptize told me that whomever I see the Holy Spirit descend upon will baptize with the Holy Spirit. In our first reading today, the prophet Isaiah seems to be talking to himself, Israel, and Jesus, while at the same time he challenges us to reach out to the whole world. Putting it into context of today's world, it's not enough for Catholics to be saved, it's not enough for all Christians to be saved, but all humanity must learn of Jesus Christ and be given the opportunity to be saved. In the second reading, Paul is greeting to the Corinthians 
and giving thanks to them for the faith they have in Jesus Christ. And let us always give thanks for each other and for the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. Now, I don't need to tell you what you already know about the many things going on in our culture, such as abortion, that are against the moral principles that we as Catholics have been taught and need to avoid. Well, not forgetting to protest the sinful actions in a loving manner, let us not be blind legalists like the scribes and Pharisees who went about in great lengths to make sure that people would abide by all the rules of the law but would not lift a finger to help anyone and who tried everything they could to condemn Jesus. Sometimes we forgot the commandment, we forget the commandment Jesus gave his disciples just before he ascended back into heaven. Love one another as he has loved us. We must love the sinner, but not the sin. With Jesus at the center of our lives, we can do that. Let us follow him and help heal our world one person at a time. And let us cast the devil out from ourselves and of our world. Let us feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and shelter the abandoned. Doing the works of mercy gives us joy. Then the love of God can flow out from us to infect those around us with joy. The Lamb of God is counting on us, and with his help, we can do all things. <laughs>